What's up, guys? Welcome back to NTLP. My name is Nick, and this is the place to be for everything landscape photography. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we have a lot to cover today. We're talking about regulations for sub 250 gram drones. The Mavic Mini and the Mavic Mini 2 fall under the sub 250 or under 250 gram drone weight class. So let's waste no time. There's a lot of information to soak up here, so let's go. All right, guys, so there is a uh, few things that you guys need to know when it comes to drones and, and flying safely within Canada. To start off, uh, there's three weight classes of drones in Canada. There's less than 250 grams. Those are micro RPAs. That's the Mavic Mini 1, the Mavic Mini 2. There's 250 grams to two, or sorry, 250 grams to 25 kilograms inclusively. Those are small RPAs. Those would be like the Mavic Air, the, uh, the Spark, so on and so forth. And then there's greater than 25 kilogram RPAs or drones. I think those are the ones that they use from Amazon, maybe. <laughs> They're carrying stuff. From Amazon to people's houses now down in the states I've heard so so if you guys are looking on transport or transport Canada's website most of the rules and regulations apply to that middle class the the 250 gram to 25 kilogram drone class there is only one regulation that applies to micro RPAs which the Mavic Mini 1 and the Mavic Mini 2 fall into and that is the 900 or 900.06 regulation 900.06 states that no person shall operate a remote or a remotely piloted aircraft system in such a reckless or negligent manner as to endanger or be likely to endanger aviation safety or the safety of any person in a nutshell try to stay away from airports heliports or anywhere manned aircrafts could be or could be flying and do not fly recklessly around people. Basically, don't be a dum-dum when, when flying your Mavic Mini 1 or Mavic Mini 2. Oh, you in trouble, dum-dum. You better run, run from Attila the Hun Hun. <laughs> See you later, dum-dum. So moving on here to, uh, I guess, some questions I've received personally. Uh, okay, so first question. Do I need to register a sub 250 gram drone such as the Mavic Mini 1 or Mini 2? No, you do not. With that being said, if you were to attach anything to the Mini 1 or Mini 2, like propeller guards or landing gear, that will put the Mini over that 250 gram limit and then you would have to register your drone and get a, uh, at least a basic drone pilot's license or certification uh, to avoid that because i know well around in canada here where it snows a lot you don't really want to, having your drone take off in snow uh, or sand or anything what you can do to to mitigate that is just go to the dollar store and grab yourself like a cheap doormat and just take off and land on that. Then you won't have the need for, for landing gear. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, do I need to get a pilot certificate? No, you do not. But as I stated in the last answer, if you do put anything on your Mini 1 or 2, you just jump to that next class of drone uh, the middle class, then you would need to register and at least have a basic pilot certificate. Can I fly near airports or heliports or controlled airspace? Technically, yes. None of the specific regulations apply to sub 250 gram drones, except for the don't be a dum dum rule. You're not going to take your drone to take off at the beginning or end of a airport or fly into a hospital heliport like you're you're just not going to do that just don't be a dumb dumb <laughs> be smart be safe be incredibly safe uh some good practices include checking the drone select uh site selection tool or the drone pilot canada app try to stay 
out as much as possible within the no-fly zones. If you need to fly in a no-fly zone, whether that's getting a certain photograph that you would love to have, or if you need to do like a, a real estate shoot, or if you need to check on your roof because it's leaking, uh, <laughs> it, it happens. Um, and if you are in a no-fly zone, try to keep your drone below 100 to 110 feet. If you're flying in a no-fly zone, try to keep it as low as possible. If I fly a Mini 1 or a Mini 2, do I fall under the basic or advanced operations? Neither. Basic or advanced operations only apply to drones weighing more than 250 grams. Uh, you will need to follow the 900.06 regulation that I explained earlier. Regulated no-fly zones for uh, 250 gram drones include Class F restricted zones, which include Niagara Falls, Parliament Hill, etc. If you're using the drone site selection tool, you will or it will show you if you're in a class F restricted no fly zone. If you see a big class F flashing or anywhere on that app or on the site selection tool, do not take off. Mm -mm. Do not fly anywhere near forest fires or for that matter, any type of emergency situation. Say there's a big pile up on a 401 in Toronto. Don't take your drone up. No, don't do that. Don't ever do that. Do not fly in national parks. Federally national park, federal national parks. Like that's Jasper National Park, Elk Island National Park, Banff National Park, that those are in Alberta. If there's any federal national park, do not fly in it. One quick tip here that I picked up and I've actually just realized uh, over, I think it was about a few, three, maybe four weeks ago, so about a month ago, the DJI Fly Safe map uh, does not have or does not follow Canadian regulations. Uh, use the drone select or site selection tool that can be found online or the drone pilot app for accurate no-fly zones. So I know there, there was a lot of material to, to kind of soak in here. This list that I'm gonna sh tell you guys is, is basically good practice to follow uh, while flying your Mavic Mini 1 or 2. Keep your drone within visual line of sight. If you can't see your drone, you've gone too far. Simple as that. Stay below 400 feet while flying in fly zones and stay between 100 to 110 feet while flying in a no-fly zone. So if you need to get that cinematic shot of a bride getting ready or something at their grandparents' house and their grandparents' house is in a no-fly zone, just try to keep it low. Keep keep it as low as possible. Stay away from close proximity from uh, airports, heliports, seaplane bases. Stay away from crowds of people and events. So if there's a football game going on, don't take your drone up. <laughs> just don't do it. Any type of sporting events, live music, concerts. With that being said, none of these good practices that I just outlined are rules or regulations that apply to sub 250 gram drones. However, failure to fly in a safe manner or if you fly in a reckless or and or negligent manner, you could end up with a fine of $1,000 and you don't want that. I'm sure that the fines could probably go up from there, but I think that is the starting point is uh the starting point is a thousand dollars and it can just go up so if that's not uh enough of a, a warning for you i don't know what is i don't think a, a lot of people want to be paying a thousand dollars and up because they were being a dumb dumb <laughs> as of october 2020 and is effective until march 25 2021 transport canada regularly updates its aeronautical information manual or aim and have published a few more rules of thumb, not regulations, just rules of thumb. And they include maintain the MRPA in direct line of sight, like I said. Avoid flying your MRPA above 400 feet. Like I said, stay below 100, or stay below 400 feet. And if you're in a no-fly zone, Try to keep it under 100 to 110. Keep a safe distance between your MRPA and people. Stay away from aerodromes. 
aerodromes, water aerodromes, and heliports. Avoid flying near critical infrastructure, which I can only assume could be like electrical plants, nuclear power plants, water plants, etc. So just stay away from that. Stay clear of aircraft at all times. Conduct a pre-flight inspection of your MRPA. Keep the MRPA close enough to maintain the connection with the remote controller and avoid advertised events. And that, again, that falls into like concerts or live productions, sporting events, stuff like that. So avoid advertised events. Oh, <sighs> okay. I know that there was a lot of information here, a lot of information to, to, to soak in. But in essence, when you are flying, just be extremely careful. Uh, always perform a pre-flight check. Just don't be a dum-dum. Dum-dum. And to help you guys not be a dum-dum, uh, in the description below, I've created a PDF for the Mavic Mini and Mini 2, um, a pre-flight check. In there, you'll, you'll see just inspecting your drone. Are you in a no-fly zone? Are you out of a no-fly zone? And a whole bunch of other little check boxes that I personally always use before I take off. And I think it would be in good practice for you guys to, to start using that or start using something like it. Most of the regulations and, and rules apply to the 250 gram to 25 kilogram drones. If you are flying a Mavic Mini or a Mini 2, you fall under the micro RPAs. You only really need to follow the 900.06 regulation. Basically just don't be a dumb dumb. <laughs> uh, there is a guideline PDF from Transport Canada that I'm going to put up on the screen now. I'll link down to it in the description and uh, you can print that out, save it to your phone, what have you. So that along with the pre-flight check, I think you guys should be good. All in all, have fun, fly extremely safe and get some killer shots. Absolutely. So guys, I think that wraps it up. Uh, if you got anything from this video, please let me know down below. Better yet, hit that little subscribe button. It's that little red button under the video. While you're down there, hit that like, share, and bell notification. Also, follow me on social media. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Links are in the description below. All right, guys. I'm going to leave it at that. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.